The good news from Belize is there's no news from Belize. Given that it's in Central America, that is news in itself. If you can't remember where Belize is, you're probably not alone. It used to be called British Honduras. It's in Central America, all right, just the other side of that big bump in the Gulf of Mexico. But in every other way, it's in a world of its own. This is Belize, Radio 1. It's 6 o'clock, la 6 de la mañana. In London, it's the changing of the guard at Buckingham Palace. In Belize, the biggest deal of the day is the opening or closing, depending on whether you're a person or a boat, of the bridge at 6 o'clock sharp, give or take a few minutes. There's not a lot of news in Belize, and Belizeans are not interested in anyone else's news. The paper comes out weekly and contains such spellbinders as the opening of a sanitary napkin factory. If you were to write a motto for Belize, it might be no sweat. The place has never been invaded or invaded anyone else or had a coup or got terribly worked up about anything. I think we're a society that's fairly free from, from paranoia, um, fairly free from hysteria and fairly free from excesses. Dean Barrow is foreign minister and economics minister and attorney general. What accounts for all this ear-splitting serenity? We have a, a completely um, different history and tradition from the rest of Central America. You can trust the courts. That sort of thing. You can trust um, the police. Precisely. You can trust the government. I would certainly hope so. You can Which is saying a lot for Central America. <laughs> Belize has always been the odd country out, free of the corruption, the dictators, guerrilla movements of its neighbors. Its ingredients would seem to be a recipe for disaster. Every race, color, religion you can think of. Creoles and Carib Indians, whites and blacks and Asians all coagulating into a quite content society. No sweat at all. Harry Courtney, for example, is leader of the opposition. Elsewhere, he might express his opposition by being dead or on the run. I hope that one could persuade the government to see the error of their ways, to amend, modify their policy by appealing to reason. Emotions tend to be difficult to control. And this is how you get into some of the difficulties that some of the more emotive countries and populations end up in. A man in your position in another country in Central America would probably be in a camouflage uniform in the jungle somewhere carrying a Soviet rifle. I hope that never happens in my country. I hope it never happens. Belize is not wealthy, nor is there dire poverty. The place is quite law-abiding, the people very traditional. Odd when you consider they are descended from pirates and other ne'er-do-wells. It was dubbed the Mosquito Coast a few hundred years ago a good place to disappear to for anyone who wanted to live life their way. The Mennonites came here years ago and found a perfect escape from the depredations of the 20th century. They and Belize clip-clop along at their own unique pace. At first thought, Belize would seem to be the perfect place to attract that particular breed of entrepreneur. Those men you meet on airplanes, all attache case and no cash selling everything from cement plants to gambling casinos. But they seem to come a cropper in this lovely, steamy backwater. Something in the Belizean character grinds them down, a kind of polite indifference. They come thinking Banana Republic, but are quickly disappointed and leave for more corrupt pastures. Or they stay on forever and just lie back and enjoy the place. Morning. Take Mr. Emery King of Tampa, for example, a man of many failed enterprises. Yes, indeed. What a lovely day it is. Whose boat was wrecked on Belize's barrier reef. That was 33 years ago, and he's still here. I've uh, put out a magazine. That didn't do too well. I ran a newspaper for a year. I had a subdivision, sold about half the lots, built a dozen houses, and uh, 
sold them all and then quit building houses and went into something else and <laughs> lost the money. I should have stayed with building houses. Jerry McDermott was once a big shot oil executive in Houston. He came down here to negotiate an oil concession and bye bye Houston. Would you go back? No way. Never gave it a single consideration. Not for love, not for money. I just can't picture going back. I love it here. He now owns Paradise, at least the Paradise Hotel, all 20 grass huts, and doesn't have a button-down collar to his name. So much for a Yale education. The place is magnificent, the world as it was before package tours. The beaches go on forever and are forever empty. Only 160,000 people in a country the size of Massachusetts. Hyperactivated North Americans quickly adapt themselves to Belize's more civilized pace. The tallest building is a Mayan ruin. Someone had the bright idea to move the seat of government 50 miles inland to the city of Belmopan. And as you join the rush hour traffic to Belmopan, relishing the fact that there's not a single traffic light in the land, and as you pass Belmopan International Airport, you might think this isn't a bad way to run a country. Let the politicians and the bureaucrats talk only to each other. Practically everyone else huddles happily down on the Mosquito Coast in Belize City, a pleasingly dilapidated place that gets hit by a hurricane just about the time it recovers from the last one. Beyond the weather, there's the Guatemalans. They say they have historic rights to Belize and all that waterfront property and keep threatening to invade. So Mother Hen Britain did not totally abandon her young. She left behind a menacing nest of Harrier jet fighters. But even Her Majesty's forces are not enough to stem another invasion, one far more potent than Guatemalans on the warpath. American television comes to Belize through a practice that first put the country on the map, piracy. It gets hijacked out of the blue by such enterprising broadcasters as the owner of these homemade dishes. From his Belizean version of Television City, he serves the town of San Ignacio with four channels. Once a week, the station owner goes door to door to collect for his services. If he isn't satisfied with the receipts, he pulls the plug on everyone. Rain and snow way off. We'll have details on uh, our weather pattern around the Chicago area tonight on the 9 o'clock news. One effect of all this has been to make Belize a suburb of Chicago. For some reason, the Chicago station comes in loud and clear. It's somewhat confusing. And via Chicago, they get Dallas. Belizean ingenuity, a beat up car battery and a box of wires reflecting North American life as it isn't. But in their own backyard, North America as it is, is beginning to encroach. Belize, so long accustomed to being ignored, is wakening to a new reality. Aldous Huxley wrote of this place that Belize is somewhere on the way between nowhere and nowhere. That's one of those nifty little writer's comments, but Mr. Huxley could not have been more wrong, especially in these uneasy 80s. Well, just down the pike that way is Nicaragua and El Salvador. Over the border is Guatemala, and a piece up that way is Cuba, and just beyond it, the United States. So Belize is between a lot of rocks and a lot of hard places. That being the case, US troops have landed. Here it is said for the sole purpose of improving the roads. But some find their presence sinister, fear the United States could kill Belize with kindness. The US mission went from four to almost 60 people in five years. And the biggest per capita Peace Corps contingent in the world has descended. USAID has put its hand on every aspect of Belizean life. During the Grenada era, the United States referred to the Caribbean Sea as its own backyard. For instance, we have in our country a so-called relay station for the Voice of America. So-called, you say? I say so-called because it began as a small project and now it's a monstrous project. If it is perceived as a danger to those across the border, 
they might one day decide that they're going to come and pull it down. Is Belize going to be a small, undefended part of the Central American mainland? Yeah. I suspect the United States will not tolerate it. The left hand of the United States wants to help Belize. The right hand is bankrupting the country. Belize's sole cash crop is sugar. Because of U.S. measures to protect domestic growers, the Belize sugar industry has collapsed, driving young Belizeans north to the land of Dallas and Dynasty. The collapse of the sugar mills has also sent growers into marijuana, a more lucrative crop. The government is trying to stamp it out, but the mission seems impossible. And so you have a wicked little fable for our time. Ronald Reagan's economic policy may be crippling Nancy Reagan's war on drugs. And there's the Coca-Cola factor. What could be more symbolic of American policy, diplomacy, taste, and influence? In this case, it is Coca-Cola the real thing, the corporate colossus, bigger than many countries. Coca-Cola Foods is a partner in a land purchase that represents a quarter of all the privately held land in Belize. The company says it wants to plant oranges here for Minute Maid orange juice. Coke was brought in when Barry Bowen, a Belizean who owned all the land, was about to lose it to the banks. Coke bailed him out. Their consultant on the deal was no less than Malcolm Barnaby, the former U.S. ambassador to Belize. The other partners are two wealthy Texans, Walter Misher and Paul Howell. But that's an awful lot of land, isn't it? Just for just right. <laughs> You're a former ambassador to Belize, U.S. ambassador to Belize. Are you a bit concerned about uh, what might be perceived as kind of a big-footed, heavy-handed Americans coming into a small country? The people here, the government here, they know they need jobs. They know they need economic activity. The way to get there from here to there is through investment. And investment comes from, uh, from the people who have the resources and the technological uh, know-how to, to develop the, the land. We get roughly 10,000 square miles here and 160,000 people. You know, they can stand a tremendous amount of development, and they, and they need it. We don't want to go anywhere where we don't think it's politically stable, and we sure think that's true here in this country, that it has great political stability. The only place out the Rio Grande River where we'd be uh, willing to invest. The intentions of the three partners are unclear. Coke has put its citrus project on hold and has offered to give 32,000 acres back to Belize. But that still leaves Belizeans wondering about what will happen to the other 640,000 acres. That kind of foreign control used to label a country Banana Republic. You are not what people normally think of as a Banana Republic. But is there a danger of becoming one? The risk is there. I am sure that the Coca-Cola annual budget is perhaps about 50 times the size of the national budget of the country. <laughs> However, the development of the country is equally important. The welfare of the people is equally important. So we must, um, we must face risks in life. And we must organize our relations with Coke in such a way that we hope we will be able to influence what they do. We hope as well that mankind has learned a little bit about the mistakes of the past. We hope so. Faint hope. The mistakes of the past are spilling over Belize's borders. Thousands and thousands of refugees from El Salvador and Guatemala are setting up squatter communities all over the country. Belize's weak security force and innate good nature means that not much has been done about it. It is hoped the refugees do not carry the political bacteria of their home countries. They bring with them uh, ideas which are certainly not Belizean ideas. They have been born and raised in a country where the politician is an enemy, the policeman is an enemy, the judge is an enemy, that uh, disputes are not settled in court, they're settled with a machete or a pistol. And it's our job to educate and Belizeanize these refugees as fast as we can. We're not fighters, we're lovers. We like, we like everybody. We say that it is wrong to tell lies. You Take a good look. Easygoing, strategically located people do not have much of a future in a world in which, if Coca-Cola doesn't get you, then the Cubans will, or the Sandinistas are the choking embrace of too much American goodwill. Maybe this place should be left as it is.
short on paint and long on heart. Maybe the best news we can all hope to hear from Belize is no news at all. <laughs>